Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Why do people find God's displeasure? That is to say, why will they experience God's eternal condemnation? It is because they do not want to submit to the truth of God. Usually, it's not because they are unaware of the things of God. In fact, their conscience usually has convicted them that Yeshua is indeed the Messiah of Israel. But they simply do not want to obey and do God's will because they are committed to their own desires. Take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew in chapter 21. The book of Matthew in chapter 21. We're going to begin in the verse 23, and we see that Yeshua, previously, he was in the temple, and he's still in the temple teaching. And it's with that in mind that religious leaders, now these individuals, they are wise, they have encountered already the miracles that Yeshua has done. He has proven over and over that he's just not a mere man, but the one sent from heaven to be the Redeemer. And notice what happens. Look with me, as I said, to this 23rd verse in Matthew chapter 21. We read, and entering into the temple. Now, this is Yeshua. Having come into the temple, we find that he was teaching. And it's in the midst of his teaching that there's an encounter with who? Notice what it says in the second part of verse 23. The high priest and the elders of the people. Now, these individuals, the high priest and the elders, they had authority. Both religious authority, but also they represented under the Roman Empire. They represented Israel's government for the Jewish people. And they witnessed what we taught about last week. And what was that? How Yeshua, how he came into the temple and found people not truly worshiping God, not obeying the word of God, the commandments of God. But what were they doing? They were profiting. And they were doing so in a way that wasn't even honest. He says, you have made my house, the house of God, a place of prayer for all people. He says, you have made it into a den of thieves. They were stealing from people. They weren't serving God. They were serving their own purposes. And you remember that he responded? He responded by overturning the tables of those who were changing money and also who were selling doves, and those who were buying and selling, he threw out. Physically, he threw them out. And these leaders, they confronted him. They didn't get the response that they wanted. So when he began teaching, they once more confronted him. And I want you to pay close attention to their question because it all has to do with authority. And they asked him, in the middle of this verse, they were saying, by what authority these things, what things, what we talked about, him throwing these people out, overturning the tables and the seats, and putting a stop to that which is displeasing to God. That's what Messiah will do for you. If you invite him into your life, if you submit to him, he will lead you to stop doing those things which are displeasing to God. So ask yourself, what is more important to you? Doing what you want or doing what God wants? Let's say it another way. 
pleasing yourself or pleasing God. You have a limited amount of time in this world. And the counsel of God's will is this, that you would be wise enough, humble enough, live sacrificially in order that you would be well-pleasing to God and not in an objective of simply trying to serve self. Serving self will not bring joy into your life, but serving God, obeying Him, it will become the delight of not only this life, but for all eternity. So these leaders, they come to him and say, by what authority these things you do? And they followed up with a similar question, who to you gave this authority? So by what authority and more specifically, who it is that gave you this authority? to behave in this way and perhaps to say the things that he was teaching. Look now to verse 24. But that is in in contrast to what they wanted, their objectives. It says, Yeshua, he answered, he said to them, I will ask you also one word. That's literally what it says. One word, it's one thing, one in this context. He has a question for them. And he goes on to say, which if you will say to me, meaning if you respond to this, then he says, also I to you will say, by what authority these things I do. So he's not holding anything back. He's not being mysterious. He's saying, I'll tell you exactly the answer to your question by what authority and who it is that gave me this authority to do the things I'm doing. But first, I have a question for you. Now, notice what he's doing. He's taking charge of this situation because he is the authority. He is over these high priests. He's over these elders of the people. He's the son of God. And he wants to demonstrate that God has sent him into this world. So he asked them a question. Look now to verse verse 25. Something that was familiar with all the people. Remember what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 3. That John the Baptist, he came on the scene. And the scripture says all, all of those in Jerusalem. All those in Judea. All those around they went out to him and his immersion. And what type of immersion was it? Well, notice what he says. Here's Yeshua's question to the leaders. He says, the baptism of John. Now, John's baptism, and the scripture makes it very clear, is a baptism of repentance. Now, if you're wise, we would just stop for a second, and you would write down, Repentance is foundational. You will never begin to connect with God, experience God, God move into your life. You'll never experience salvation. You will not know the living God in your life until you repent. And it's so unfortunate today that many people, they think they're sharing the gospel. They say, you know, if you want God's help, If you want to experience God's love, if you want all of these things, just accept Messiah. The problem is they do not share an accurate, a biblical way to accept Messiah. You cannot, and hear this very carefully, you cannot receive salvation. You cannot experience God. You won't know his help, his assistance, his power in your life, his illumination, having his perspective, unless you repent. And that involves understanding what is sin, embracing, acknowledging God's standards, not yours, not someone else's, not the world's, but God's standards. And acknowledging that how you have lived in the past how you're living right now is in conflict and having a desire we're not saved by performance but you must did you hear that 
You must, it is absolutely a requirement from God. You must repent, meaning this. Having a desire, a sincere desire, you can't lie to God. Having a sincere desire to move away from sin, your way, your desires, your objectives, and embrace the standards of God. Here again. You're not saved by your performance, but if you don't have a desire to obey God, we're not saved by obedience. But if you do not have a desire to walk with God doing His will, you will not be a recipient of His grace. So he says here, the baptism of John, a baptism of repentance, where everyone in this area, all around Judea, they responded. They responded because they were moved with the fact that John, I'm speaking about John the Baptist, that he was sent by God. So he says, the baptism of John, from where was it? From heaven or from man? I realize there's only two possibilities. When we speak about anything that has a spiritual implication, something that is truly of a, a godly religion. What do we know? We know it's from heaven. That means from God. The alternative is this, and this is where all other religions are. All other so-called writings, spiritual writings, what they would call religious writings, they are all from, don't miss this, they are all from man. They originated with him, they're the thoughts of man, they're the desires of man. Only this book, only this book is from God. And therefore, Yeshua is saying, he's saying to these religious leaders, here's my question. The baptism of John, was it from heaven? Meaning, did God really call him, send him into this world to do that? Or was it from man? He just operating, acting, behaving, speaking on his own. Now, the question is not a hard one to understand, nor is the question difficult. They know the answer, but they don't want to say the answer. Why? Notice what happens. Verse, verse 25, second part. But these. Notice, but, that's literally the conjunction. It shows that, that they are, are disagreeing. They're in contrast to the direction of Yeshua. But these, reasoning, that means them giving much thought to this. These reasoning from themselves, from their perspective, their thoughts, they were saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, therefore, why did you not believe him? But, verse 26, if we should say from man, what's the problem with that? Well, they were fearing the people. Why? For all, hear that carefully, for all were holding that John was indeed a prophet. So here's the problem. They knew that John, John was a humble man. He was a man that was totally committed to the things of God. His attire, his food, his lifestyle, his words, everything, everything, about John the Baptist said that he was committed, fully committed to the things of God. That's why Yeshua said, and we studied it, of those born of women, meaning in a natural way, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. So the people affirmed that they knew him. He was revered as one sent by God. But here's the problem. If they acknowledge the truth, that he was sent by, by God. Therefore, Messiah would say, well, he spoke of me. Why don't you believe him? They didn't want to. Why? It wasn't a lack of knowledge. It wasn't because they didn't understand. It was because, and I said this before, but it's so vital. It was because they did not want to submit to God's authority. Again, you need to ask yourself, do I want to submit to the authority of God? He is God. He is sovereign. 
He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Why ever should we think that we should say no to him? Saying no to him is going to bring, first of all, it is going to rob you of joy. It's going to rob you of his provision in your life for this world and the age to come, the kingdom of God. So they weren't interested in the kingdom of God. They weren't interested in repentance, and they were not interested in the leadership, how Messiah was calling people, leading them to, to live their life, what to do, the information that he was providing from God. So they said, if we answer truthfully that John was sent by God, therefore we need to accept Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. But if we say of man, the problem is this. We would be dis disagreeing with all the perception of the people because everyone, what did the text say? Everyone held him to be a prophet. Therefore, verse 27, in answering Yeshua, they said, we don't know. It's not that they didn't know. They were lying here. They didn't want to answer the question. They said, we don't know. And move on, verse 27, second part. He says to them also this, nor will I say to you by what authority these things I do. Now, he's not complying with their objective. Why? Their objective is to put him to death to bring an opinion that he is a shameful, false teacher, to bring the view upon him that he should be stayed away from and not listened to. He's not going to participate with that, that deception. These individuals, they may be religious leaders, but they are not submitting to the will of God, the truth of God. They are not honest people. They are doing what? Instead of just answering the question, they are always looking for an angle, trying to strategize in order to accomplish, and here's the problem, their objectives. And when you are about your will, say goodbye to God. God won't be part of your life. He's not going to provide. He's not going to move. He's not going to help, assist. He's not going to give you insight that you are so desperately in need on unless you say, not my will, God, not my objectives, not my plans for my life, not my so-called destiny that, that I've dreamed up, but your will, oh God. What you want, this is what I'm committed to. This is what my life needs to be about. Now move on to verse, verse 28. We have now an example of something. But what do you think now? Probably here, he's turning to the crowd. His disciples are most likely there. And he's turning to the crowd of people, and obviously the leaders, they're going to hear this. And he says, what do you think? And it says here the word is to have a perspective based upon that which is obvious, that what it seems to be. So he says, uh, what do you think? A man having two, and your Bible will say sons. But it's the word for child. In, in Greek, we have the masculine, we have the feminine, and we also have the neuter. And the word child in, in Greek is in the neuter. What does that mean? It's not speaking about a son or a daughter, but children. Now, obviously, the context is going to be sons. But here's the point that needs to be pointed out. And that is, he chose this word because a son has one connotation, a daughter have another, but children. That word usually speaks about a family relationship, and it's a term in the Greek language of great endearment. So it speaks about the love that a parent, in this case a father, has for either a son or a daughter. He uses this word. So we read here, but a man having two children, this case two sons, 
And, and coming to the first, he says, child, most Bibles will say son, but it's a term, as I said, of great love. He says, son, go away today and work in my vineyard. Now, the word vineyard is important because there is a connection prophetically. We see this in other parables and also prophetically in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, that Israel is called a vineyard. Why? To produce fruit. And not just any type of fruit, but grapes for the purpose of wine. And in the scripture, wine most frequently relates to joy. So Israel was supposed to be a vineyard that produced joy, a heavenly joy in this world and one that would follow us into eternity. So he says, go and work in my vineyard, verse 29. But uh, he answered, he said, I don't want. But after a while, it says that he, and this is a word for to have remorse. It's not the normal word for repentance, but it's a word that speaks about a change of heart. Now, this is also in the passive meaning. This change came about from something. And what was that? Well, probably his conscience. He began to think about his father who loved him, who called him to do what he should be doing anyway, and that is participating in the purposes of our Heavenly Father. And so after time, he had remorse. He was made to be remorseful, and he went away, implying he went away to serve in that vineyard. Verse 30. And coming to the second, he said, likewise, he said the same thing. Verse 30, middle of the verse. But this one answered, he said, I, meaning I will, Lord. Now that's a a great way to respond. He says, yes, I will do it. And he speaks to his father with such a term of respect. He says, Lord. Now, in this case, it could mean sir, but again, it's a term of great, great respect, and it recognizes authority. So from an outward, from a verbal standpoint, he's doing just that. But here's the problem. Look at the end of verse 30. And he did not go. He said that he would, but he didn't. Verse 31. Now, which from the two did the father's will? Not a hard question. Even though the first one said, I don't want to go, he had remorse. He was made to change. And he ended up going and doing his father's will. Whereas the second one, although he says, I'll do it, sir, I'll do it, he did not. So Messiah says, which of these two did their father's will? And they said to him, of course, the crowd, all the people, not a hard, hard question. They said to him, the first, and Yeshua says to them, truly, I say to you that the tax collectors and, and it's a word for prostitutes. Now, two people that would certainly be looked down upon in society. Those who had turned away from their own people and joined serving the Roman Empire for the purpose of collecting taxes. Betrayers. They did the wrong thing. But when they heard the invitation, when they heard about Messiah and what he was offering, and the miracles that he did to confirm that he had authority, God's authority, to bring about the will of God. These tax collectors and these prostitutes, what did they do? They changed. They wanted a kingdom future. So ask yourself that very important question. Do you want a kingdom future? He says, middle verse 31, Truly I say to you that 
the tax collectors and the, the prostitutes are going before you into the kingdom of God. Now, notice, always, always, the emphasis of Messiah's teaching is what? The kingdom of God. And he says, these individuals, they weren't known for good deeds. They weren't doing the right things, tax collectors and and prostitutes. But what did they do? They wanted a change in their life. They wanted a kingdom future. And therefore, they, and here's the context, they heard that message from who? Yohanan. And that's John. But Yohanan speaks about God's grace. And they heard John the Baptist speaking about grace through repentance, turning away from sin, and God embracing that one who repents and bestowing freely eternal life, forgiveness of sins, and being coming a recipient of not just the people of God, but the promises God has for his people. So he says, they will go before you, literally it says, are going before you into the kingdom of God. Verse 32. For John came to you in the way of righteousness. John came displaying, showing, being a righteous one. And what happened? He says, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, but you did not believe him, did not respond. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes, they believed him. What was that message? Repentance. They believed him. But you, seen, and pay close attention to that word, seen. It is a word of not just visually recognizing something, seeing it, but it's a word for perceiving something. See, they were not operating out of of a lack of information, unknowing. They had perception. They had understanding. But he says, but you seen, you were not remorseful you could not be made to repent to turn to feel remorse afterwards and believe who believe john and what did that mean believe the message that john shared of messiah the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world accept him turn and receive god's gift of eternal life shalom from israel Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.